Hey everybody, thanks for coming back for another one with me. What I want to do is share some of my experiences of you in different departments within the hospital and let you know what to expect. So I'm going to break it down into a couple different videos and what I want to start with is the emergency room. God forbid you guys ever have to go to the emergency room. There's a lot of things that uh, people don't expect when they walk into the emergency room. So uh, there's also a lot of people who have been and have not been to the emergency room. So this will be hopefully informational for uh, people who do go there, uh, people who have never been, and so forth. So there's also a disconnect that I feel is between what uh, people expect from a healthcare perspective towards the patient and vice versa. And um, there's roles to be played for both. So in any case, um, the first thing I want to talk about is expect a lot of people when you go into an emergency room because... Uh, for several reasons. One of the biggest things is try to go to your doctor if you can, guys. If it's something that uh, isn't really super emergent, something that you can go to your doctor for, try to go to your doctor first. And a lot of times doctors do refer you to the ER, something that they can't take care of at their office. That's okay. Or sometimes urgent care is something that they can't do, so they refer you directly to the ER. Okay, that's separate. But try to go to your doctor first. There are a lot of people who are always going to go to the ER for their A to Z care. So just know that when you walk into an ER, uh, whether it's uh, something that you see as very emergent or not, there are going to be people there who are always going to go to the emergency room. So try to avoid that altogether and try to see your doctor first. So the best thing I can tell you to try to ensure that you're going to get the best chance of timely care is go before 11 a.m. Go before 11 a.m. because that's when we say that the ER starts to wake up. And don't come at 3 in the morning because that's when all the drunk people get out on the road and they start crashing into things and uh, yeah, that's not good either. And like any other place where people work, there's a limited number of resources, a number, uh, limited number of staff. So as time goes on throughout the day, know that there's a higher patient to nurse and doctor and just staff in general ratio. So if you can get there early, you can get in and out early. And another thing to note is whether you break your leg or you're having a heart attack, there's always somebody who either has less of a priority than you or more of a priority than you. So know that there's going to be things that go on behind the scenes. So you could be sitting there with a broken foot and you're like, what the heck, dude? Like, I've been sitting here for two hours and not one person has moved in the ER. And you don't know that there's strokes and gunshots and things. And I'm not kidding you. Like, one event could turn into three. And those three could literally take, like, over an hour easy. And it came out of nowhere. I mean, I've had days where it has gone from, I mean almost being able to read a book if you had one, right? And then all of a sudden you get one trauma, then you get a gunshot, then you get a, a rollover car accident, and you're just like, holy crap, all within like 30 minutes. And um, yeah, unfortunately, that priority bumps people down. So try to ensure that those chances are less and less for you guys by trying to follow these steps. So thank you for joining me on this one, guys. Um, Hope you learned something, whether you've been to the ER or not. Hope you guys never do have to go to the ER. And so just trying to keep some ways and um, build some bridges between the healthcare and the people who are viewing this at home. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.